Hello everyone, with five Grand Prix already in the books, it's time to take a look at the latest scores from our teammate wars following the Monaco Grand Prix. For those of you joining us for the first time, here's a quick recap of how it works. All season long, we'll be judging the F1 teammates on how they compare in qualifying, who sets the fastest lap in each race, and where they finish when the checkered flag waves. They'll get one point for each battle won. So with that being said, let's begin. Things are back to square at the front of the field with Lewis Hamilton clawing back ground on Valtteri Bottas to make it 9-9 to -9 for the season so far at Mercedes. Crucially, Hamilton is edging away in the championship though, and it's telling that he's now 4-2 to two ahead of Bottas when it counts on Sundays, with Bottas keeping himself in the game under our scoring system thanks to fastest race laps, something Lewis has never really prioritized in his career. Now, moving to the rear of the field, and Robert Kubica says he silenced his doubters by proving he was just fine driving a Formula One car around the tight and twisty streets of Monaco, but he still didn't manage to get his first score on the board against rookie teammate George Russell. Kubica ran ahead of Russell in the early part of the race, although in the end, the deciding factor between them was a strategy, with Russell's early pit stop eventually paying off and allowing him the rare chance to race amongst other cars on a Sunday afternoon. The team formerly known as Sauber had a weekend to forget in Monaco, although in our teammate wars, Kimi Rakuten made sure he extended his advantage over Antonio Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi managed a faster race lap than Raikkonen for the third time this season, but as you can see from our graphic, he is yet to finish ahead of the Finn in a race. It was a messy weekend for the Italian, who was close to Raikkonen in qualifying before picking up a grid penalty for impeding Nico Hülkenberg, and his race was defined by a poor start and a collision with Robert Kubica's Williams that earned him another penalty. Daniel Ricciardo continues to streak away from Nico Hülkenberg as Renault bids to get its season back on track. Over the last four races, he has only conceded one point to the German from a possible of 12. Ricciardo completed his second straight point sweep against Hülkenberg in Monaco, advancing to Q3 on Saturday by being just a tenth faster than his teammates and then scoring points on Sunday, while Hülkenberg's race was most memorable for his run-in with Charles Leclerc. Toro Rosso continues to impress on track in 2019, and in Monaco, it was the more experienced Daniel Kvyat who had the edge. Both Kvyat and Alexander Albon made it into the top 10 in qualifying, and they finished less than a second apart in 7th and 8th, with the Russian ahead both times. Albon set the faster lap in the race, which was a third quickest overall, but Kvyat has now stretched his advantage in this battle to 11-7 for the season. The fight between the Haas drivers was largely decided by factors outside of their control last weekend, but that still enabled Roman Grosjean to make up some ground on Kevin Magnussen. Grosjean missed out on joining Magnussen in Q3 when he was clearly held up by Pierre Gasly's touring Red Bull in qualifying, meaning he couldn't contest the battle for Class B pole that was claimed by the Dane. In the race, Grosjean scraped into the points while Magnussen's afternoon was ruined by an early pit stop that left him stuck down the back of the field and unable to make progress, but he still holds a strong 12-6 advantage over his teammate. Racing Point was off the pace in Monaco, but once again, Sergio Perez had the edge over Lance Stroll. There was only one position between the pink cars as both were eliminated from qualifying in Q1, but the gap was nearly seven-tenths of a second in Perez's favor. Strategy made the difference in the race as both drivers ran outside of the points, but Stroll claimed the score back on Perez with a faster race lap, which is where he has logged most of his points in this teammate battle, with Perez clearly on top when it counts in qualifying and during the race. Lando Norris's first ever Monaco weekend as a Formula One driver was a difficult one, and he suffered his first whitewash at the hands of Carlos Sainz Jr. since the Chinese Grand Prix. 
Sainz's appearance in Q3 and points finish on Sunday helped McLaren move clear at the head of the midfield in the championship. Norris, on the other hand, missed out on the top 10 shootout thanks to a small mistake in Q2 and his late pit stop in the race condemned him to a Sunday afternoon drive spent holding up faster cars and just missing out on the points. Battle has been close all season, but the Monaco weekend has given Sainz a decisive lead of 11-7 heading into Canada. Pierre Gasly is still yet to out-qualify Max Verstappen or finish ahead of him in a race, but once again in Monaco, his quest for the fastest lap bonus point also helped his score in our teammate wars. Gasly cleared the leading Class B runners in the race after his grid penalty for impeding Grosjean dropped him down the order, but in qualifying, he was still four tenths slower than Verstappen. In the race, there was only four seconds between them on the official results, but that was thanks to Lewis Hamilton slowing the pace at the front and Verstappen's time penalty for his unsafe release in the pits. Verstappen now leads this one 15-3 and Gasly will be coming under pressure from Red Bull to start making this battle more of a contest. It doesn't feel like Charles Leclerc has been a long way off Sebastian Vettel this season, but his first year at Ferrari has been packed with drama and a terrible error by the team in Q1 left Leclerc fighting a losing battle in his home race. Leclerc promised to charge through the field in the race, but his risky strategy came unstuck when he hit the barrier at Cascas while trying to dive past Nico Hulkenberg. The resulting puncture ripped the floor of his car to pieces and he had to reluctantly retire while Vettel claimed Ferrari's best result of the season with second place thanks to Verstappen's penalty. The battle between these two has often been close on track this season, but under our scoring system, Vettel is now 13 to 5 ahead of Leclerc. Well, here are the final scores ahead of the next race. Be sure to stay tuned for our next episode of Teammate Wars following the Canadian Grand Prix. I'm Julia Piquet, and thanks for watching.